A lot of us, uh, a lot of the listeners here will know you, Hugh, from uh, the Hawkwind that we play on the station here. Yeah. And, uh, boy, you've played, uh, you were a founding member in Hawkwind, were you not? I was there at the beginning pretty well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, so, as, as far as I can remember, <laughs> <laughs> those days are fairly hazy. But, no, I was there, yeah, beginning, yeah. And uh, as well as Hawkwind, boy, you've got a successful solo career. And uh, I've got three of your albums. There's, what, five out or six? It, I think it's six. Um, is it six? <laughs> I t- you tend to lose count, you know. Um, one, two, three, at least six, yeah. I, I think that, that might include the, 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 the... There was an album put out called Outside the Law, um, initially, which which unfortunately was a bootleg. You know, uh, 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 one of the fans at the gigs recorded it and sent it off to a, the Flick Knife Record Company. And Frenchie rang me up and said, oh, "I have this very good tape, and I think we should make some money out of it." And, uh, at the time, we, we, we weren't too healthy financially, and I thought, "Oh, yeah, fair enough. Why not?" But then when I heard it, it, it the, the, the recording quality was so bad, I tend not to even um, uh, count that as one of my albums, really, because it, it's literally a bootleg. You know, but, but, but there's quite a few people seem to like it, but it's, it's, it's totally raw and probably one of the most honest live albums ever put out, I think. You know. But uh, there you go. Outside the Law, I think, uh, is a... It's on one of your other releases. Uh, the song itself is, I think. Yeah, well, yeah. It, 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 in fact, it was on the, the, the first thing my um, solo project was did was a um, a single for Flick Knife, and Outside the Law was uh, one of the two tracks on on the single. Seems to. Uh, in fact, they decided to put the other side out as as the the A side. Um, although over the years, more, more more people than often have suggested that um, outside the law would have, been, would have been a better bet, you know. But there you go, you know, such is life, you know. Such is c'est la vie. <laughs> did uh, did Frenchy ever pay you for that? I know when I was speaking with Dave Brock, uh, oh, this is some years ago now that uh, they hadn't got paid for any of the Friends and Relations albums. No, we, we, he, he didn't pay us pay us anything, as far as I know. You know, if he paid anything over to anybody, I never saw any of it. But but he he seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. You know, so so nobody can collar him for anything. So, but there you go. So such is such is the music the music game. You know. So the album Night Air that uh, I think was out on Flick Knife. Is there any way that listeners can still get that? Well, in fact, it's just been, it's literally just been transferred to, to CD, um, and it's being put out on voice print. Do you know voice print? Yeah, I've got a couple on, uh, a couple albums on voice print, as a matter of fact. And th- they've, they've just transferred it to CD, so it's now available on, on CD. And your new, uh, your new album is out on your own label, I believe. Allegro, yeah, Ch- Chain Reaction. Uh, Marion was nice enough to send me that album. Uh, oh, about yeah. just as it come out, actually. Yeah, totally good. Now, what, what did you think of it? Well, it's got a lot of airplay, and I oh. uh, wouldn't get airplay if I didn't get phone calls about it. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> um, my, myself, though, I like the album. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly di- diverse. I mean, in fact, it's the first. Uh, I mean, the last couple of albums I've done uh, uh, have involved a lot of. Um, drum machines and stuff, which I don't particularly like myself, you know. I much prefer to work with a, 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 a living, breathing drummer, you know. But sometimes sometimes they, these living, breathing drummers can let you down, you know. So, um, but the, the, this the, the chain reaction was, was, was done with a full um, band, you know, and a lot of it was played almost live, you know. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that one. And most people by my speed to seem to be quite happy and impressed with it, so which is the main thing you know you've uh, you've played with a fair amount of uh, people over your career for you know a, a fellow that's played with as many bands that you've been in um, and in fact you uh, you're quite a guitar player yourself. you had a column in a magazine oh yeah 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 that, 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 it was a it, 
at the time it was a new magazine gu- guitarist, um, a British. Um, I, I don't, don't know whether it um, it's available elsewhere. I presume it's pre- it probably is available elsewhere and on, on, on the planet because it's, it's, it's been a long going thing now. But uh, I was involved uh, with the, the original few, uh, well, six copies, I think. It was, I think I had a six copy um, column, you know. Uh, and it, uh, that, that, you know, that, it, was, it was quite a strain, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, it takes quite a, a lot of brain work to, 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 to think of new things all the time when you're writing a column just on the one subject, you know. But it was a. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I did it, you know. But um, yeah. I've uh, I've got a couple of questions here from uh, fans and listeners from around the world that uh, knew that I was going to be speaking with you and have sent me some questions to ask, if that's okay. Yeah, oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, there's a fellow named uh, Ian, a- Ian Abrams, and uh, he writes in a lot of Hugh and Marion's songs seem to be about the disconnections between people and a heartful plea to just care about each other. Uh, well, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, uh, um, that all, all the lyrics are sort of basic, basically sort of heartfelt, I, I, I believe. I mean, even the, the, the Black Sword numbers that I wrote, you know, the, uh, the Michael Moorcock uh, um, thing that Hawkwind did, um, e- even the, the lyrics that we wrote around his stories were, were, were concerning like, people and and situations that that, that that can be transferred to the real world. You know, um, and it's, it's, it, it, it's sort of always sort of aimed at. I don't know. I'm trying to. I don't know. Either, either open people's eyes a bit, or or, or shed a, shed a bit of peace and love. If you like, you know, basically. There's a. Uh, let's, let's pull another question out of the hat here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a hat, you've got a hat. <laughs> I got my Toronto Maple Leafs hat on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the folks around have sent in some questions. Uh, I'd be more interested to know what is what does Hugh's future plans involve. He's been quite active in recent events, such as the Hawkestra at Brixton, the Nick Wind at the Island Isle of Wight from last year and upcoming again. So does this mean that Hugh's heart has never really left the Hawkwind family, and maybe he finds it easier to play a couple of dates per year instead of being a full-time member and having to put more time and labor into uh, the Hawkwind family? Um, well, the actual Hawkwind family circumstances... So it's such that it, it is fairly um, sporadic at the moment, but I seem to be doing more and more with them, you know. And, and my heart, my heart's always basically been there. Um, the, the last uh, time I actually left them, the, 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 the business thing was all going sort of askew and haywire, as things that have been doing over the years with Hawkwind on and you know on and off. Um, and I was, I was fairly sort of disheartened when I, when I left them the last time, but any sort of bad um, feelings have, been, have, have, have gone under the bridge now, you know, so... And uh, I seem to be doing more and more with them, but I'm also doing as mu- much work as can possibly be arranged for my own band, and I do acoustic gigs, and I don't... I'm, in fact, I've, I've got an acoustic... Well, it's a, a, a charity thing on in, in Oxford... Um, in August, which, which I've done for the last two years, I don't know. I, don't, I might even do that with, with my band, you know, because it's, it's it's a very enthusiastic, good band. So, um, but I mean, anything that comes up that that Dave Brock invites me to do, I'll, 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 I'll do it, you know, as long as my health holds out. <laughs> uh, well, playing in a band like Hawkwind's got to be hard on the health. Well, it, I mean, well, playing in, in, in playing in general and in the mu- music business is quite hard on the health, you know, because it's uh, especially when one one's not getting getting any younger. But uh, no, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a very hard game to be into because it's, it, it's as I say, it's, it's all so, so sporadic. It can be very sort of stressful and frustrating, you know, which is which isn't any good for any 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 of us human beings, you know. 
I was uh, speaking ahead, Ian Hunter, on the show last week, who also just has a new album out. Oh, yeah. And he, uh, now he's got, uh, he's getting away from the management end of it. All he does now is just show up and play. That's, well, that's, that's the best, that's the best way to go about it, yeah, most definitely. Because, um, being, having anything to do with the finances and management is, uh, I mean, that, that for me is the worst part of the business because, Basically, I mean, most musicians are, are, are in it because we're lazy artists <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of whatever kind, you know. Um, and the last thing that you, you really want to be involved with, with, with is, is the business side and financial side of things. But unfortunately, I mean, you, 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 it sometimes um, overtakes you and you, you have to get involved, unfortunately, you know. But it's by far better just to ignore all that, you know. So if if Hugh wasn't a guitar player and he wasn't a musician, what would Hugh Lloyd Langton be doing? Uh, well, I, I was always uh, in my in my younger day, in my school days. The only, the only thing I really was interested in was art. So it it, it has to be um, one of the creative, that, you know, art artistic. I, I was completely disinterested in anything else. Even though but the majority of my my, my family, um, uh, well, my mother was a nurse, my father was a pharmacist, and, and it's all sort of doctors and that sort of thing. But I think the musical thing comes from my mother, who's Welsh and always liked singing, and um, she dragged me and my sister off to chapel whenever she could just to uh, sing the hymns, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but but it, it being into art. Uh, Music is, is, is art anyway, so it's uh, it's not far removed from painting and drawing, you know. So. Just a different canvas. Oh yeah, basically, yeah. But but um, I think I think I don't know which which um, area would be harder to sort of get anywhere with a musical art, you know. I don't think chances are it would be harder with it to been a, an art artist, a painter, draw because of the. It's a lot cheaper, uh, a book of um, paper and a couple of pencils are a lot cheaper than guitar and amp, you know. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah, most certainly. So it's, it's probably, there are probably a hell of a lot more people that are good with pencil and paper or, or, or paint and paper than are with um, instruments, you know. Um, I've got another question here. This is from yet another person named Brian, and uh, he's here in Saskatchewan, actually. Yeah. Uh, it says, here's a question. If he could assemble a dream band, what members would he include and what type of music would he play? Space space rock like Hawkwind or more blues rock orientated as appears on your solo albums? Oh, that, that is an enormous impossible uh, question. In fact, Marion did say that you, you'd said uh, you, you, you asked, asked her the question, but she, she thought you meant the dream Hawkwind outfit. Uh, I think there's... obviously not. That's a, it's a different. That's a different question. Well, there, there's dream both... band. That, 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 that is such a uh, grief. <laughs> 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 that's a, that's a, that's a, he's really got me there because I mean, there, there, there are so many amazing musicians about, and and, um, and I think, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm so open-minded musically. It, it, it's it's it's, it's that, that's not an, an impossible one for me to answer, really. Uh, Marion mentioned that you're uh, a Jeff Beck fan. I do. do I do. He, he's got to be one of, one of my fav, favourite um, box players, yeah. Because he, he's, he's so versatile. But, I mean, in fact, when she mentioned uh, that, 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 that you said that, I, I did happen to mention the other day I'd heard Beck's new album. And there's so many sort of... Uh, Spacey orientated rhythm, rhythmical things on it. I said um, he ought he ought to get together with old Dave Brock at some point. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, you think that that would work well? I, I, God knows. I, I really don't. I, I, I don't really know Beck, so I, I don't know how how well he get on with old Brocky. Brocky, you know, uh, uh, and as far, as far as I know, that they they, they they could that they both can be quite awkward characters, you know, but. But they're, they're, they're both highly talented in in their own respects, you know. Right. But um, as as a dream band, I've done really true grief. That's that's a very hard one. If 
I myself could incredibly hard because I mean a lot of the bands that I've actually worked with have been almost dream bands I mean except that certain of the people have let the situations down on occasion you know so um I, I, that's what that's one I definitely have to sort of sit and think think about for at least a week <laughs> <laughs> to, to give you a realistic answer you know. Well, it's it's sort of like listening to music, I guess. There's no favourite song because uh, people, uh, their tastes change all the time. Oh, yeah, certainly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's just that, um... What, you asking me if I've got a favourite song? Yeah, hey, there is a good question. Is there uh, is there somebody that you're listening to right now that uh, that's really catching your attention? Uh, as I say, I've got such a diverse taste in, in music. I do, I do like... Uh, quite a lot of jazz rock, um, as in uh, Zawinol, you know, Joe Zawinol, who was with, with, with Weather Report. Uh, I know the name, but I don't know his solo music, no. Yeah, well, it's, um, it, it, since Weather Report, I, I don't think Weather Report exists anymore, but I, I recently acquired a couple of his solo albums, and I, and I do like that sort of, I, I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very much into sort of highly percussive stuff. Right. And um, he he tends to deal with a lot of percussion, you know, even, even though it's just very keyboard orientated. Um, and the chick career I've, I've always liked. Um, who else? I mean, there's there's Jean Luc Ponty. Mm-hmm. Jean Luc Ponty. He's a he's like a jazz violinist, well, jazz rock more more than jazz violinist, and he uses a lot of sounds echo and, and stuff like that um, on his violin. Well, he sure did some interesting stuff with Frank Zappa. Oh, yeah, well, exactly. You know, he, he's he's, I, I, he's one, one of my favourite artists. You know. I, I, do, I do like the um, sort of jazzy rock influence stuff, you know, but, but, but probably more rock than the, the yeah, jazz right. influence. You know, when they start getting into heavy jazz, I sometimes like it, but um, not all the time. Um, and who, who, Pat Metheny, I, I do like as a guitarist. Have you heard of him? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, matter of fact, my boss is a big uh, Pat Metheny fan. Yeah, I, I do like Pat Metheny, but um, the, the, only, the only trouble being his albums, some, a, lot of, a lot of the time, it's, it's very hard to distinguish what, what's the guitar and what's, what's the keyboards. You know? Yeah. But um, well, it's not that's that's not the trouble. But it, uh, it's, I always quite quite like to know who's playing the guitar and who's playing the keyboards. And on his albums, it, it, it tends to be a little, little bit hard to tell at times. You know, yeah. I don't. I do. I do like the sort of jazzy rock stuff and and sort of mod, modern classical stuff. You know, well, not that modern, but um, weird stuff like Bartok, but uh, Ravel as well, and stuff like that. And rock bands and things. I mean, I, 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 I always did like the old Steely Dan. Um, it's, 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 as I say, but there's so much good stuff about it. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to say who, who I prefer out of a lot of them, you know. Well, that, you know, that's one, one good result of the cost of recording equipment coming down so much. You know, everybody can afford to put out stuff now. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. And the, but there, there is so much stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff you don't even get a chance to hear. You know. Right. But uh, I, 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 those the, those people I, I just mentioned, I, um, I I tend to sort of listen out. Well, Jeff Beck as well, I do like him. He, he's one of the... Well, McLaughlin, who obviously likes Beck as well, because he, he Beck appeared on one of the albums that McLaughlin made. You're talking about John McLaughlin? Yeah. From Mahavid Shoe Orchestra. Yeah. I've got-
got another question here from a fellow named Michael Blackman. It says, uh, Hi, Hugh. Uh, when would you like to take a holiday in sunny Australia? The red carpet is waiting. Well, it, I think we're, we're planning to go over there um, over at the end of the year. As, um, uh, Marion's boss has, has sort of footed the bills to an extent because uh, he, he, he goes over there quite often. Um, so I, I believe we're actually due to go over there at the end of the, be- uh, end, end of the, end of the year. That is, yeah. So I don't know where he, whereabouts he lives, but I don't know, I don't know exactly where the plans are that where we're going, but you never know, you might bump, bump into him. Are you going to be playing there at all, or just vacation? It's basically a, a vacation, but um, God willing, I'll take a guitar, and if I get invited, I'll get up and have a jam somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy tickets for Australia as well. <laughs> uh, he also has another question here. Do you miss being an influence on and a part of Hawkwind, or are you grooving along with your solo work and having a blast? Um, I guess that's kind of the same question that one of the other fellows asked. Um, oh, but uh, Yeah, but, but I, I, I do um, sometimes definitely miss sort of working in the Hawkwind circumstance because... Um, it's, it's literally part of a band, as opposed to working with my outfit. It's just more more on my shoulders. But I, I, I enjoy that as well because uh, there's there's quite quite a lot of stuff that I, I well myself and Marion have written over the years um, that that wouldn't suit Hawkwind at all. You know, right? I mean that's based, that's partially why uh, my my outfit was formed because. Um, well, we got the opportunity to to put the single out with um, Flick Knife, and that hit the the, the the metal chart. So we thought, right, I'll take the band out on the road, you know. So and that and I was still with Hawkwind for a couple of years after my band was formed, but but um, being able to to go out with my own my own outfit, I, I could perform stuff that certainly wouldn't wouldn't have suited Hawkwind, you know, so, but, but both situations sort of, for a time, work, work quite happily hand in hand, but then, then business really it's an ugly head and certain other things, so, um, but hence I split, but now it, it seems, I'm, 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 as I say, I'm, I'm working sort of doing more with Hawkwind as, as time seems to go on, but my band still exists as well, so... I'm I'm totally happy with that situation because it, it it can it can become a little bit stifling just working for one band. Right. Well, as you know, as so many artists over the years have realised, hence, hence so many you know the bands take a vacation from each other and go their separate ways for a time, but then God willing, they eventually can't come back together again. You know. And it, but it gives you a sort of fresh lease of life to an extent if you can go, you know, get off and do your own uh, thing and, you know, you know do, right. do what you have to, you know. You've, uh, boy, I'm just going over the bio here, and uh, you've played with uh, some pretty impressive people. Um, yeah. Can we talk about some of them? I mean, other than Hawkwind, of course? Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, I see you work with some of the people from Little Feet. Uh, Pete Beckett, I think his name was. Well, well Pete Beckett, I did hear. I don't, I, I, I don't, I've never actually seen an album of Little, Little Feet with Pete Beckett on 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 it, but I, I did hear that he he had joined them. And I don't know how that actually worked out because uh, I, I haven't spoken to Pete since he well he moved to America lots of years ago. Um, but it, what was it? He was he was he was with a band in America. I can't even. Think. A band called Player, they Player, had a right. big number one hit there and had an album out. And Pete, Pete's an excellent musician. Comes from Liverpool, <laughs> home, of, home of the Beatles, you know. But he's, he's a great, he's a great music, all-round musician and good writer, good singer. But um, I saw, I saw him in America when Widow, Widowmaker were, 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 were um, gigging over there. We were playing in Los Angeles, and he, 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 he turned up at the gig just out of the blue, so it was really nice to see him. That, that, I'm talking about, that was years ago now. But then, he, he wasn't doing much at the time, but then 
Um, and Marion was actually working for Robert Stigwood at the time, and, and Stigwood were managing player. Right. And so Marion turned up home one night with this album by Bankal Player, and then that next thing they were sort of think they were num number one in the uh, American charts with with their single. You know, I, I don't I don't know if it was the album or the single that was number one, but right. he, 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 he seems to have done incredibly well. Although, as I say, the last thing I, I heard, he he joined Lit Little Feet, but. What, what, whether anything came of it or not, I don't know. It's sort of like Mick Ronson joining Moth the Hoople. He was never on any Hoople albums. No, right, yeah, yeah. I see uh, you also wrote uh, some music for uh, some animated cartoons, working with uh, Viv Stanchel from the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. Yeah, well, I, I, I never actually got to see the cartoon because um, Marion, Marion actually went to the opening of it. I, I, so I, I never even got a copy of it because in those days vi videos weren't that. Um, well, we we certainly didn't have a video in those days. But yeah, I I I was rode in as a guitarist and I I started playing. I, I tuned my guitar up and, and um, started playing a riff. Right. And the musical director said, "Oh, I like that. I like that. And we use that." So it, the, the music was, was my um, tune-up riff, and uh, Stanchel put the, this po po poem thing, or, or he narrated something over the top of it. But I, I never actually got to hear the finalised part of it, because I, I, I went off to, to, to America with Widowmaker. As I say, Mar Marion got, went to the opening party, and um, somebody else, some, the, the musical director took, took credit for the music. Oh. You know, as some people do, you know, but there you go. I won't mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> Probably related to Frenchie. Well, it's quite possible, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> um, and speaking of Mott, you've been working with uh, Ariel Bender from, uh, with with Widowmaker, and I think you're on a new album with him as well. I, I could be mistaken on that one. Well, in fact, Luther has been planning to do a, an album for some time, and I've, done, I've got the tapes, and I've, I've done some rehearsing with him. But he he, t he, ten he tends to be somewhat of a scatty character, and it, and it tends to take him quite a long time to actually sort sort things out, you know. So, um, God willing, it will come off. Um, he did have a, there was a bit of a hiccup in that the guy that he has been. Um, recording, you know, the guy that's been doing his producing and who owns the studio died not long ago, so that that's probably caused the uh, the hold up, you know. But he, he has, we have been planning to go to the studio and, and record uh, a, a new new Ariel Bender album or Luther Grosvenor album, right. whatever you like to call him, Luther alias uh, Ariel. You know. Yeah, he's because uh, there's some very good strong stuff there, so. It's well worth doing, and I, I hope it does come off. But knowing this business, I, I, I believe things when I see them. Anyway, right? It is. It, it's it's on the cards. But as I say, I mean, it would, you know, believe it when 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 I see it. You've uh, you toured with uh, Leo Sayer. Oh yeah, that was good fun because it was a. Uh, um, it was basically really just a, 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 an out-and-out -out session, you know, but it, it lasted for quite quite a few months, if not close to a year. But um, one of my oldest friends, a, a drummer called John Lingwood, who um, he's, he's continually works, but he, he put me up, up for the job um, with Leo, and I, I, I didn't... I mean, Leo just took his word, word for it that I, I, I was a good player, so it was almost like I, I auditioned, auditioned Leo as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> but um, John John Lingwood, I mean, he's, who's he with, he's with a band called Snake at the moment, who, who's, well, it's White Snake, but without Ian Coverdale. But um, prior, prior to that, he's, he's worked with Roger, what's his name, Roger Chapman for a long time. Right. And Manfred Mann for a long time. And he, he, he's one of, one of my oldest pals. We, we, while I was working in, in a guitar shop in, in London, he was working in, in a drum shop, sort of quite close by, and that's that's how we we actually met. But um, and that that was that was when we were both children, really, you know, a long time ago. But um, you know, John got me the gig with Leo, but but that lasted lasted a fair 
period, um, um, but and for, we didn't actually record it because we, we did were television things, like the Russell Arty show and something else, the, the old Grey Whistle Test for all. Right. Um, unfortunately, they there's, there's, haven't got any footage or, or rec- recordings of it, you know, which is a shame as far as I'm concerned. I'd, I'd, I'd like, to, like, like to have heard it, you know, and, you know, now to see what it sounded like then. Right, and you've uh, you played with uh, the Pretty Things on uh, on one of the European tours. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That that, that was good. I enjoyed that. You know, although it was a shame that some of the gigs they were they were doing were quite very small. And I, I, I thought they deserved better. You know, having been around for that long. You know, I mean, almost being in contention with the Stones when the Stones kicked off. And as far as far as I know, Dick Taylor, who who produ- he produced the the, the the very first Talking album that I was on, um, the guitarist with Pretty Things. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. <laughs> I was going to say something else. Then I've lost my train of thought. But it, no, but I, I thought um, it was sad for Dick and Phil May that the certain of the gigs were by far too small. That, and oh, that's what I'm saying. That Dick was, was apparently one of the original guitarists with the Stones. Apart from anything else, right. Dick, Dick Taylor, and he left them for whatever reason, or, or got sacked for whatever reason. I, I don't know what what exactly. Happened. I, I know he was a one of the originators, original members of Stone. But um, to say that it's sad, that it's sad that the pretty things have ended up doing silly little gigs in Europe when um, they they were contenders for the the Stones title in in the early days. You know, right. But it, it, was, it was good fun. But I mean, they, they did some, some very small gigs. They did, they did some quite large gigs as well. But it was a, uh, it was good to work with them. And in fact, I mean, Phil May was a, a, a neighbour of ours, Marion and, and mine in London before he moved to Brighton some years ago. Right. So we knew Phil anyway. But I got a call from Dick one night, um, late one night, and asking me if I'd, I'd be interested in doing this tour with them because the, the guitarist they they were using had quite a few family problems or something. And, he said, and I said, oh, yeah, definitely, I'm, I'm well up for that. And uh, Dick said, right, well, I'll see you, but I'll meet you at the airport tomorrow then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got about 12 hours' notice, <laughs> which was a bit, you know, cra- crazy as the music business is, you know, but, but, um, but it was well worth doing. I enjoyed that. You know. Right. What, um... You've got a uh, getting getting back to Hawkwind. You were on a fair amount of Hawkwind albums. Is there a favorite for you? Uh, I, I always like like the original one, right? The, the first one because that was a uh, innovative in itself, you know, I mean, for the time. I mean, acoustic guitar and electric guitar and synthesizer. Well, I mean, the, the, I don't even think you could buy a synthesizer in those days. It was just a uh, dick nick with his generators and echo machines and making all the sounds, you know, but, but I, I, that there are some good tracks on that. Um, I was I was very young at the time, so I mean, it, it, it was sort of inexperienced and slightly in, in, intimidated in that Dick Taylor, the pretty right. things guitarist, was producing it, so I, it could have been better where I was concerned, you know, my playing was concerned, but I, I do like, I think that album's a good one, you know, and I particularly like Levitation, um, and it was a, a privilege to work with old G- Mr. G.B. Aker, Ginger Baker. Right. Um, that that must have been a strange marriage, Hawkwind and Ginger Baker. Uh, not really. I mean, it was it was, uh, it, it, it was incredible how well. Well, I mean, um, Ginger Ginger can play anything anyway. You know, any any style. But uh, it's funny in the. Terry Ollis, the, the, the very original drummer, right. uh, who was very young when he when, when when while he was playing with Hawkwind, um, his style was was very similar to Ginger's in, in that Gin, Ginger's very percussive as opposed to just straight boom back boom back. You know, right. he did, he's a very percussive drummer, but, but so so was Terry. So his his style I mean, fitted the band incredibly well. Um, I mean, had, had it had it not, and it only he 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 was paid to come in and do the Levitation album, the session, you know. But but then he 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 was happy to sort of carry on. T- 
touring with the band after that, and, and it's a shame that it all, it all came to grief. I mean, a certain a certain person sort of fell out with Ginger over a certain thing, and uh, the veritable muck hit the fan, you know, and, right. and so it all fell to pieces. And that that was while we were rehearsing for an American tour, and so it was a, the start. It was a great show, and the tour had to be cancelled because the band fell to pieces at that point. But um, as it, you know, that, as, as a person, I mean, that he, he got on with everybody very well and, until this particular um, incident, question of something <laughs> arose, and somebody disagreed with him, and everybody knew that Ginger was right, but um, Gin Ginger's the, the sort of person, if you do cross him or fall out with him, he he doesn't forget in a hurry. He holds grudges, you know, so right. it just disintegrated after that, which was a shame, because I thought the start of him, drum, style-wise, his, 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 drum, his percussive drumming style fitted Hawking incredibly well, I thought, you know, and it actually sort of let it off into slightly different um, avenues as well. Right. Not taken away from the Hawkwind sound, but he he, he was definitely a... Um, his his musical ability definitely added something, you know. And it's, uh, it's a shame, I thought, that that ended when it did, you know. It could have gone, gone on to by far greater things, you know. Mm -hmm. But as bands are, you know, all a bunch of big kids, basically. <laughs> you know what album uh, that you're on that I really like? I'm partial to live music, so of course I like live albums. A lot of people don't. But uh, the Live Chronicles, I think you were just phenomenal on there. Oh, yeah, but that, that, that's a damn good album. That, that, that is definitely one of, one of my favourite ones. Because, that, 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 you know, it's a very good live album, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Very good. You and, uh, in fact, Marion wrote a track. Uh, it was on the Outtake or Out and Intake album. Uh, was it Dream Dancers or Dragons and Fables? Oh, Dragons and Fables, probably. Yeah, and... Uh, Marion got credit on the album for that. That's good to see. Oh yeah, well, well she, she she wrote the lyrics. Did she? Oh yeah, I mean, the, Marion's, Marion's written a lot, a lot of the lyrics that we um, of the songs that we put out over the years. You know, so she's she's a she's by far more fluent as a, as a lyricist than I am. You know, um, it, I, I I tend to have to be very highly motivated to to write a lyric. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly fluent where. Um, the music's concerned, but lyric, lyric, lyrically, Matt Marion, I mean, she, she's the poet amongst <laughs> us, you know. Is she a vocalist as well? And, and fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> but if Marion was a vocalist as well, there'd be no, no holding her back, you know. They... She'd, be out, she, she'd be out there touring the world, you know, because uh, she, she's a very, very forward, motivated person, you know, as opposed to myself, who, who likes to sit in the couch most of the day. Well, maybe she'd get you to open for her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, she do. She definitely do that. But no, no, she doesn't actually sing. Uh, she, she'd always like to have sung, but she hasn't got a particularly um, good vocal vocal voice. Or she she can talk very well, uh, but um, you know, uh, uh, melodically, it's slightly she's slightly off on occasion. Even though she 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 can play the old organ. Quite well, and she, she's in fact she's eighth grade at organ playing. It's the old, uh, the old style organ stuff, the classical stuff, and that. Right. Yeah, but um, no, vocally she, she's never been that hot. You know. Even I, th I think at one point in, in her youth she actually did a backing track with, with Alexis Corner's daughter Sappho. Oh really? And Mariam was sharing a flat at the time. And they were off to so they did some. So I, I can't remember whose session it was at the time, and they both happened to be there and ended up doing a, the backing vocal on on the thing. So I, I dread to think what it's. Oh, no, Sappho had a particularly Alexis Corners daughter had a particularly good voice. Right. But um, I think she probably carried Marion through that through that backing vocal. <laughs> I, I'm I'm guessing right now Marion's not in the room. No, she's not in the room. I don't think she would mind me saying that. I mean, she she, she, knows, she knows she hasn't got a particularly good voice, you know. but she does like she she likes she likes singing in church. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you about um, the amount of Hawkwind bootlegs that are out. 
uh, and, and maybe I'm probably putting you on a spot here. Um, I know with the computer age nowadays, music goes uh, farther and farther, yeah. and it's out of the artist's hands. Yeah. But some of these bootlegs are pretty good. I'm sure some of them are, but I, don't, I haven't. I'm sure I haven't got even half of them, or even a quarter of them. You know, practically every time I go out with my band on the road, at least. Um, one or two or even three or four bootlegs that I've never heard of that, 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 that people approach you with to sign them. Right. And I don't, that, and not, not, not even out, I mean, some of, some of the, the, the CDs and things people ask me to sign uh, uh, via companies. Oh, really? And I, 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 I've never heard of them. I don't, I don't even, I didn't even, don't even know they exist, you know. And this, this happens on it, on every, Talk or, or almost every gig I do, somebody will turn up with something I've, I've never heard of before. Right. And it, it, there's just so much, and but a fair amount of those um, CDs and, and things put out through smaller companies, you can class as bootlegs anyway. Right. As far as, far as I know, that they haven't, people haven't had permission or any agreement to, to, to put them out. You know, so the whole thing is is so out of hand, really. I, mean, I, I, I almost give up with it, because you, you just can't keep up with it, you know. I, uh, I, you know, I've done a fair amount of recording for bands and that, and I've got, uh, I've got live tapes that people really want, but I find that if I've got them, it's something that I have. It makes it more of a collector's item, of course, so you don't trade it. But yeah. from, from time to time, you do get permission to be able to trade with people. Yeah. But as long as it's not sold, and I think that with uh, with the computer age, that's almost putting an end to the bootleggers. Well, uh, to an extent, uh, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know, because people are always sort of willing to sort of fork out a few quid for a, something in their hand, you know, the yeah. cassette that's, that's got, or a CD that's got, got a, a sleeve and stuff, aren't they? Right. But, um... I mean, computers is something I'm completely illiterate. I'm, I'm completely com computer illiterate myself. I don't, I, I don't even know. I'm sitting in, sitting in front of a computer in Mary's little office here, and I don't even know how to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well, because you never know where she's been on it. I don't know what. You never know where she's been surfing with it. No, but, 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 but I don't. I don't know how to turn it on, so I wouldn't know. But. uh and, you know, if, if there's anything interesting comes up on the web, she always gives me a shout and tells me. You know, but right. I, 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 I almost shy away from them because I, I, I've got a feeling that if I got into a computer, I'd never get out of it. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd just be sort of sat in front of it all day long and all night long. You know. And uh, in fact, you've got Marion has a website for your band, and uh, of course, we'll be giving the uh, address for it at the end of the show. But it's a uh, it's a nice little site that you got up there. I did. I, I, yeah, what, what I've seen of it, I, I, it looks 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 very professional to an extent. No, but I, I don't particularly like looking at photos of myself, so I don't take that much notice of it. Right. Well, put I, on. I, I see myself in the mirror in the morning, and that's enough. You know. <laughs> put on some dancing girls. Pardon? I says you'll have to get some dancing girls on there. Oh yeah, def yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, I'll, I'll get Marion to organise that. Um, that's about it for, uh, for the time that I've got here, Hugh. All right, mate. Um, I...